Now, let's move on to the second part, which is bulk insulation. Now, I said there are two types of insulation. I'll just mention very briefly the other type of insulation, which is called reflective insulation, also called sarking, sisolation, or foil. It looks like aluminium foil, and it's not going to help you really in winter. So we can sort of ignore that, push that to the side. What I want to talk about is bulk insulation. That is pink bats, they're not all pink, some of them are orange, they come in grey, etc. as well, but bats or loose fill. Now, how does bulk insulation work? Well, heat actually conducts through your building, and this is how you lose most of your heat in winter. Heat goes through the walls, well, through the ceiling first, through the walls and windows, and through the floor to a lesser extent. It actually goes through the materials. The way in which we slow this down is by trapping small pockets of air. That's what bats do. The bat material actually doesn't do much, but the little pockets of air trapped within the bat is uh, what insulates. Unmoving air is a really good insulator. Also think of double glazing, same thing. You're trapping a pocket of air or a, a vacuum or a layer of argon. Think uh, multi-layered window coverings like multi-layered curtains. Once again, two layers of curtain trapping a pocket of air in between. It's the air that's doing most of the insulating. Uh, the other thing I should mention is the greater the temperature di difference between, say, inside and outside, the quicker heat will conduct. So in winter, it could be, let's say, it's 19 degrees in your living room, it's minus 3 outside. That's a temperature difference of 22 degrees, so that means there's a lot of force behind that energy moving out of your house, and this is why we need to insulate. Insulation will also help you in summer, but it'll help you most in winter. I've already mentioned that it's all about trapping small pockets of unmoving air and down here we've got some nice pictures. This is some really well laid insulation bats. You can see they're well laid because there aren't gaps. So you'd, gaps vastly reduce the effectiveness of insulation. You want as much coverage over your ceiling as close together as possible as you can do. Or as the professionals can do. They should be doing it like that. This is some loose fill cellulose. Loose fill is fine as well, although as you can see it does make it a bit more difficult to get back in the roof space and do anything if you need to because you can't see where the joists are to walk on. Now, we measure the effectiveness of insulation in what are called, or bulk insulation, in what are called R values. R stands for resistance to conducted heat flow. So just remember, R for resistance, that tells us the higher the number, the better. Have you all heard R2 this and R4 that, R1.5 that? Right, okay, that's what that's talking about. And actually everything around us has an R value. It just tells us how much resistance there is to heat conducting through it. A rough rule of thumb for standard bulk insulation materials is R1 is about 5 centimetres. So R1's about that, R2 is about 10 centimetres. A lot of Canberra houses have R2 or R1. Um, R2 will just about come up to the, the ceiling joists. R3 is about that, R4 is about that, and R5 is about that. Now in this climate, you want at least R4. The standard is actually now R5, but the reason I say at least R4 is if you've got R4, that's doing most of the job of R5. So I wouldn't be going spending a lot of money on just <laughs> upgrading from R4 to R5. If you've got R4 or more, you can leave it, but if you've got less than that, I would be adding insulation to your ceiling. You'd always insulate the ceiling first. The ceiling is the place you lose the most conducted heat. Secondly, you do the walls. Uh, and I should mention how they do the walls. In a, in a new house, obviously, it's easy. You just put the insulation in, into the framing as you're doing it. But in an older house, what they do in most houses, they get onto the roof, pull up roof tiles, put a pipe down through the cavity in the wall, and then blow in a substance called rock wool, loose fill rock wool. And that progressively fills the wall up excuse me, and adds about R3 to the wall. So it does very well. If you get your walls over R2, you're doing well. So you always do the ceiling first, then the walls. Floors I've put in brackets because I really wouldn't bother insulating your floors at that point. I would do the ceiling, the walls, and then the window coverings, do your gap and crack ceiling, see how you feel. I would bet in most houses that you don't need anything more, so I wouldn't be going to the expense and trouble of then insulating your floors. There is an exception. If you live on the side of a hill, here's your floor, here's the hill, uh, what you'll often find is there's too much air moving underneath the floor and that can draw heat out of the floor and make it feel very, very cold. In that case, if your floors are freezing, uh, that's when you might want to insulate your floor to stop your floor feel, feeling freezing all the time. But I would still do ceiling walls first and then in that special instance I'd think about doing the floor. 
<clears throat> as I said, gaps in insulation reduce its effectiveness, so try and avoid gaps. And that's why those things like the downlight covers and the, um, uh, the draft stoppers are really good. I want to also mention one other thing with your insulation, and that's skylights. So a skylight like this is basically a big hole in your ceiling insulation. Even if it's double glazed at the top of the skylight, that's not going to help you that much. What you can do though is you can really cheaply insulate this and still get light out of it. So this bit at the bottom is called the diffuser. You simply take the diffuser out, which you often have to do to clean it anyway, uh, and then you get bubble wrap. And you want layer, remember I talked about trapping small pockets of air? Well bubble wrap's a really good insulator because it traps small pockets of air. So you then just put layer after layer of bubble wrap on top of your diffuser until it's at least 20 centimetres thick, roughly the same as your ceiling insulation. That's about R4 ceiling insulation. You could go more, you could go up to 25 centimetres, that would be fine too. It just depends how much bubble wrap you can get and uh, how committed to it you are. But yes, so just layering bubble wrap on top of it, you'll still get light through the skylight because it's bubble wrap and light will pass through it, but you've then insulated your skylight much the same as the rest of your ceiling. <clears throat> 